Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Pacific Rails Incorporated. I can explain easily how it goes, but it has quite a few important details that can't be left out. So let's dive right in. You are going to play until one player connects one side of the map with the other side of the map. So a train track that goes from one end of the board to the other end in whatever way. Then you finish the round and the game is over. Whoever has the most points wins the game. You get some of your points during the game and there is a bonus scoring. I'll explain those later. But again, play until someone connects the east and the west, then you finish the round and the game stops. If you have the most points, you are the winner. Next, how do you play the game? What do you do when it's your turn? That's quite easy. When it's your turn, you either place one of your workers on the board and do an action, or you take back one of your workers that was already on the board and do an action. That's all. When it's your turn, you place a worker or remove a worker. When you place a worker, you put it on one of these spots in between the actions. And then you can decide which one of the two actions you want to do. Let's have a look at all the actions you can choose from. Here you can take wood and maybe do this extra action. Here you can take gunpowder and maybe do this extra action. This space says you can take metal and maybe do this extra action. And go here to take one coin and maybe do the special action. So go to these four outer spaces to get resources and maybe do something extra. Whenever you take resources, you always put the tokens on top of your train. Then you have these four spaces with the people on them. Go to this person to pay one metal and then take a normal piece of train track. And then you go through your own train from left to right and do the actions of the people who are inside. I'll come back to that in a moment. There's also this person. If you put your worker next to this, you can pay one gunpowder and then take one of these train tracks that are a tunnel. Here, it shows the tracks go through the hill. This is a tunnel. And after that, you go through your own train from left to right. Go to this space to pay one wood and then you take one of these train tracks that are bridges. You can see it goes over water and after you've taken it, you go through your train from left to right and do all the actions that go with the people inside. By the way, whenever you take a train track token from the supply, you also put it on top of your train. Everything you take goes on these spots and it's possible to run out of space. Finally, there's this person. Place your worker here to pay money and then do this action with these hats here. Either pay money to slide one hat down and get the items you just covered up or pay one money to slide all the hats in one sec section back up and get all the points that you covered up. So either slide one hat down and get the bonus or slide all hats in one section back up to get all the points. In that case, you move your little train forward on the scoring track here. So, there are these four spaces on the outside where you get resources, and these four spaces with people on them where you pay what they're asking for, 
and then get what they give you. For these three you can take train tracks, and for this person you do this action with sliding these hats up or down for points or bonuses. The last space you can go to is here in the middle. And don't forget you always place your worker next to the actions and then you can choose which one of the two you want to do. This one in the middle here actually is two different actions. You can only do one. Either you pay to put one of these people in your own train or you spend the train tracks that you have to place them on the map. So get people or place your tracks. I'll explain the people first. During the game you'll automatically get these mats that you can add to your own train to make it longer. You've got number one, number two and number three. And as you can see each carriage has space for two people. You can get go to this action space to get those people. This space on the main board shows you how much you have to pay for each person. The first line is what you have to pay when you want to place one of these in carriage number one. This second line is the price for each person when you put them in carriage number two. And the third line is the prices for carriage number three. But what do these people do for you? Well, they do exactly the same as these four people on the board here. For example, you remember that this person on the board says you can pay one metal to take one normal train track. This person that you can buy and put in your train does exactly the same. Pay one metal to take one normal train track. And as I've mentioned before, whenever you do one of these four actions on the board with the people, you first do whatever that person does, and then you go through your entire train from left to right. Each player has their own train. This is mine. So far I've got one extra carriage, it has two people in it, and one upgrade that I bought. When I put my worker on this action, or it was already there and I take it back, I can choose to do this action. So first I do this person on the board, pay one metal and take one normal train track token. It goes on top of my train. Done. And now I go through my own train from left to right. First. I can take the bonus from my upgrade. This upgrade says I can take one coin. So I take it and place it on top of my train. And then I do this first person on the left. It's this guy from over here. He's in carriage number one. So I can pay one money to do this thing with sliding hats in section number one. I choose to do it. So I pay one money, I'll slide this hat down, it shows two wood, so I take two wood from the supply and put it on top of my train. Done. And finally there's this last person on my train. It's this guy that says you can pay wood to take a bridge track. He's in carriage number one, so I pay one wood and take one bridge. It goes on top. If I would also have carriage number two and this guy was in it, I would be allowed to pay two wood tokens and take two bridge train tracks. Same goes for the other people. If they're in carriage number one, you can do it once. In number two, you can do it twice. And in carriage three, you can do their actions three times. But that's it. This is why you try to get carriages and people in them. Because every time you do one of these actions with the people on them, you go through your entire train. A step back. 
I told you that this space in the middle is two actions. So one of them is getting one of these people on your train. The prices are here. And the other action is this one. Put your tracks on the board. When you've got enough pieces, at some point it's time to place them on the game board. Placing the tracks is easy. The scoring is a little tricky. Pay close attention, here we go. When you place your worker here, or remove it, you can choose to do this action to lay down tracks. 1. You must go from where one of your trains is to another city. You must go to a city, otherwise you are not allowed to do this action. 2. If you want to go over normal land, you use a normal train track. If you want to go over water, you use these bridge tracks. And if you want to go through these brown hills, you have to use the tunnel tracks. You can't place tiles on cities, and you're not allowed to go on spaces with these white mountains. 3. You can place your own tiles, but you are also allowed to use tracks that were put there by another player. No one owns tracks. Anyway, when it's your turn and you do this action, place your tiles on the board. When you're done, you must place one of your own buildings or one of your telegraph poles on the city. Each city can have only one building and one telegraph pole. And they're not allowed to be from the same player. They have to be two different colors. If you can't place one, you can't go there. 4. Scoring. This is how it goes. First I'll show you an easy one. I place my worker on this space to do this action. My little train is here, and here is a city. So I place my train tiles on the board. Don't forget to use the right tiles. Normal or bridges or tunnels. Done. From train to city. This city was not connected, so I get two points Per tile. I placed this many tiles, so I take my points and move forward on the scoring track. Then I choose to not put a building on the board, but one of my telegraph poles. I have to take the token that is on the lowest space of my own player mat, so this one. And that says I get points here. So I take my points, and I place my yellow telegraph pole on the city. I end my action by moving my train to the city. That's easy scoring. Now let's make it a bit more complicated. I'll pretend I wasn't here. Another player went here before me, so this city is already connected. When it's my turn, I go from my train to this city. Because this city was already connected, I don't get two points per tile, but one point. And since the other player has a token already on this city, that player gets three points. It's also a telegraph pole, so that means I can't place mine, but I have to place something so it's going to be a building. I take one of my buildings and place it here. Done. That is how scoring goes. Also keep in mind that if I had had more tracks, I could have kept going further to the next city. You can make a track as long as you like, just as long as you end in a city and you have to place one of your tokens there. If you have trouble remembering this scoring, just take out the rulebook. 
A quick recap. Go to these four spaces to get resources and maybe do a special action. Go to these four spaces with the people to do their action. And then all the actions of the people that are in your own terrain. And this space in the middle lets you either put people on your train or put your track tokens on the board for points. This is how you play the game. Some important details and then we're done. A very important one. Sometimes you can do an action more than once. If my worker was already here on this space and I put another worker on this next other space to do the same action, I can choose to do it twice. So I can take two resources and do the special action twice. For the one in the middle you could either get two people or do the track laying action twice. And with the ones with the people you can do their action twice, but you can't go through your own train more than once. And what if all the spaces around the action are occupied by other players, but you still want to do it? Well, then you put your worker right on top of the action. Then you can do it. But the other players get their workers back, and they get one cowboy hat for each worker they removed. A cowboy hat also lets you do an action twice. And what are these special actions on these four spaces? To not make this video too long, look that up in the rulebook. It's all here in this one section. You could put houses on the board to get more resources or get these upgrades in your own carriage to get free stuff. And now finally I can get to the bonus scoring at the end of the game. The player who is the one that connects left to right gets 15 points. Then for every train track that you still have on top of your train, you get one point. Also look at this on the board. Count up all the building and telegraph poles you have on the map. And then see how many points you get for that. For example, if you have four buildings and four telegraph poles, that's eight in total, which gives you 28 points at the end of the game. And the last thing you get points for is these four scoring tokens on the board. Whoever has the most of whatever the token is asking for gets three points. Do this for every token. The back of the rulebook shows you what each token means. And done! This is Pacific Rails Inc. A lot of information, but I still hope you understand the game and that you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.